rampant inflation, chaos in the money market, secret hedge fund reports. Can this financial crisis actually get any worse? Well, the bad news is yes, it can, and it's about to real fast. The good news is study the facts, study history, do the right things. You'll come out on the other side, not only okay, but much better off. My name is Paul Smith, Touch on Education, and I'm, I've got mixed feelings about this week's edition of Money Matters because, as you know, money truly does matter. It gives you all the choices, but only if you've got any. So where do I want to start? I want to start with the number one big story from 2022 and where that's going in 2023. As you can see here in this report, Goldman Sachs says that UK inflation is going to hit more than 22% next year. So you think things are bad now, wait until you see what 22% inflation looks like. It's a long time since we've had inflation that high. So I've prepared quite a lot of documents here um, on my computer, and I just want to start taking you through them one at a time. One of the most disturbing things that I've seen for a long time is a secret hedge fund report that was accidentally leaked to the Financial Times. It's from a company called Elliott. But where I want to start with this is I actually want to start with what does hyperinflation mean and how could it affect the pound in your pocket? So hyperinflation, as you can see here from this definition, is it's a term used when inflation rates hit or exceed 50%. And I want to take you through some of the worst hyperinflation uh, episodes that the world has ever seen. So in this article here, we can see exactly that. This is the top five worst cases of hyperinflation. And you might think, well, why is this relevant to us? The UK is not going into hyperinflation. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. So the worst hyperinflation situations of all time. Coming in here at number five, we've got Greece in October 1944. And you might be saying to yourself, well, OK, but, you know, that's after World War Two. It's understandable. They'd been occupied for whatever it was, four or five years by the Nazis, etc., etc. But just look at this highest monthly inflation, not annual, monthly, 13,800 percent. Prices were doubling every 4.3 days. Imagine that you get yourself a, a latte or, you know, tomorrow for three pound fifty. Um, four days time, it's double. It's seven quid. Four days later, it's 14 pounds. Just imagine that. Just hold that thought and imagine. Terrifying, isn't it? And then coming in at number four, we've got probably the most famous example of all time, but it's actually not the worst example of all time. This is Germany in 1923, sometimes referred to as the Weimar Republic, where Highest monthly inflation was 29,500%, which meant prices were doubling every 3.7 days. How did that happen? Well, it happened because <clears throat> the victorious powers after World War I said to Germany, you need to pay us all that money back. But Germany didn't have any money, so it didn't have any resources. So what did it do? It printed money. Printing money always and everywhere is a source of inflation. In this case, hyperinflation. So these Germans <clears throat> printed all this money. What happened? Hyperinflation. Can you name any other countries that have been printing money for the last 10, 12 years? Oh, let me think. United States, the whole of the European Union, the ECB, the United Kingdom, Japan, you name it. We've all been doing it. OK, so <clears throat> let's, have a, let's have go and have a look at number three. Well, this is Yugoslavia in January 1994. Yugoslavia doesn't exist anymore, Paul. Well, I know that, but it did then in 1994. And in Yugoslavia in 1994, the highest monthly inflation was 313 million percent in one month. Prices were doubling every 1.4 days. Just think about that. And, you know, various causes of that, the breakup of... Uh, Yugoslavia into its constituent parts as we see today. And they're coming right forward in time, Zimbabwe in 2008. Now that's not really ancient history, is it? And the inflation rate in Zimbabwe then was 79 billion 
20% per month. Prices were doubling every 24 hours. But even so, that's not the worst. That's the second worst. So the absolute number one worst was Hungary in 1946. And I, I can't even get my head around that. I think that's 13.6 quadrillion percent per month. And prices were doubling every 15 hours. So I'm sure you've got it by now. I'm sure you understand that hyperinflation is a really scary place to be if you're trying to invest your money, if you're trying to grow your wealth, and particularly if you are trying to protect your wealth. That is super, super scary. So just look at these pictures of the Weimar Republic where people are literally wheeling barrows of money, which is one day's wages, to the baker to buy a loaf of bread. Yet yeah, one wheelbarrow of money. So in fact, the goal of the time in Weimar Republic wasn't the money, it was the wheelbarrow to move it about. Just think about that. The wheelbarrow is worth many times the money that it's getting wheeled about in. So where I wanna take you now is I wanna take you to this secret report that was accidentally leaked. And you can see here, this is Hedge Fund. It's a company called Elliott. They're big, they're powerful, they're American. And what they warned is that the hedge fund, Elliott, said there's more pain to come after the 2022 market route. Now, I wanna take you into what is the market route uh, and what do they mean by that? But first, I wanna tell you what Elliott say that the problem is. So just to give you a bit more detail on that, <clears throat> Elliott is based in Florida. They were founded by this billionaire called Paul Singer, and they currently manage 56 billion in assets. So this is a big, proper, full-on monster hedge fund. And they said, an extraordinary set of financial extremes has come out of the era of cheap money. So since 2008, we've had money that's almost free, you know, like 0% interest virtually. In fact, many countries had negative interest rates. Some still do. You know, Switzerland had a negative interest rate. The whole of the European Union had a negative interest rate. Japan had a negative interest rate. So money was actually not, not only was not earning any money in terms of interest, they were taxing you, they were taking interest off you if you put money in the bank. But anyway, the word they're using, and this is the first line of this report, the world is on the road to hyperinflation. Not Zimbabwe, not Yugoslavia, the world. Now imagine what that could mean to you, and what are you gonna do about it? Because this is a secret report from, you know, the most powerful people in the world. They didn't mean for it to get into the media. So why are they saying that? They're saying an extraordinary set of financial extremes that come as the era of cheap money draws to a close. This would be at or beyond the boundaries of the entire post-World War II period. I showed you Zimbabwe. I showed you Hungary. I showed you Yugoslavia. I showed you Greece. These are all examples of post-World War II. And they're saying we're there again. Now, investors not sh should not assume they've seen everything just because they've experienced a financial crisis such as the 1970s bear market, and 1987 market crash and so on and so forth. They're saying this is worse. 2023 is gonna be worse than anything that you've seen post-World War II. I want to show you now what's happened to asset prices over the last year and what they mean by market route because what they're saying in this article is we've got a lot further to go. Okay, so here's a news digest that I subscribe to called The Morning Brew. You might want to do the same. NASDAQ year to date down 33%. Standard & Poor down 20, 20%, 21%. The Dow down 10%. Bitcoin down 54%. That's the market route they're talking about. And what they're saying is, that's gonna get worse. They're actually saying it could drop another 50%. Okay, so I hope we're all in the same place now. We know what hyperinflation means. We know what episodes of hyperinflation the world has seen. And we know the market crash that these guys are referring to. So let's look now at what they're talking about 
in terms of high inflation because they are saying that the central bankers are being dishonest. You've been lied to about the causes of high, of high inflation. It's not the war in Ukraine. We had high inflation before then. It's not, so you need to dig past the headlines. But I want to take you, let's just go on this link together because they're talking about high inflation. And they're talking about how um, high inflation throughout the world is a really increasingly important thing. So I'm going to choose some, some random countries here. So why don't we start with Turkey? And I'll just put Turkey in there. There we go. And it says, you can see there, the Turkish inflation rate is over 80%. Uh, let's put another country in that's recently had major financial crises, uh, Sri Lanka. So you can see on the same chart, Sri Lanka is around about 75%. And that caused the failure of a nation state. Just think about that. Riots in the street, no petrol, no diesel, no nothing. We don't want to be going there, but Turkish inflation is actually higher than that. And if we just put in, for the sake of comparison, United Kingdom, uh, and let's put in, I don't know, Greece, and let's put in Germany. And now we've got uh, a basket, if you like. So we can see those EU countries, okay, they're hovering around the 10%, but you've already seen the report that says, Goldman says that UK is going to go at 20%. So how much of a hit from financial issues around the world do those EU countries need to be pushing them towards 80%? And that's fascinating for me because if you want to protect your money and you want to grow your money, where can you put money to protect it from hyperinflation? Because what I want to show you is what's going to happen if you don't protect it from hyperinflation. Here it is. Let's say you had debt or let's say you had money, either way you want to put it, of 10 million pounds. And you've just seen loads of examples with inflation is more than 50% a month in, you know, in those top five worst cases. So let's say you start off with 10 million pounds in cash or 10 million pounds in mortgages. Just think about this. So if you're at 50% a month, look at this, 50% a month, your 10 million after one month is worth 5 million. After two months, it's worth 2.5 million. And if you keep going, halving the value of the money for 12 months, in real terms, by the 12 months' time, you start off with 10 million quid. In, 10 months, in 12 months' time, it's worth £2,441. £2, now, that could be very good or it could be very bad, couldn't it? Because if you're the guy or girl with the 10 million quid, the real value of your 10 million quid, one year later, is £2,441. If you're the guy or girl with £10 million worth of mortgages, the value of your mortgage debt is 2,441 instead of 10 million. So inflation truly is the property investor's friend. I've made loads of other videos on that. Inflation is the worst nightmare of someone that has got cash. So where should you put your cash, you're probably thinking. So if you've got cash in a monstrously high inflation environment, what should you do with it? Well, of course, what you should do with it is up to you. I can tell you what I'm doing with mine. I'm doing three things. I'm investing in property, property, property. That's the number one thing that I'm doing. The second thing that I'm doing is I'm investing in gold. And the third, because that's historically a hedge against high inflation. And the third thing that I'm doing is I'm investing, I'm, any cash that I've got, I'm not holding it in pounds or euros, I'm holding it in dollars. Now. These are some quite sophisticated techniques and you do whatever is right for you. But I'm just telling you historically what's worked and I'm telling you what I'm doing. And I'm broadcasting this from Monaco, by the way. So I'm plugged in. In fact, in about an hour's time, hour and a half time, I'm out to lunch with 30 other people that live here. And guess what we're going to be talking about at lunchtime? Same thing we always talk about. I go to a Tuesday lunch club and the number one topic of conversation is always inflation, inflation hedging, what should you invest in, Swiss francs versus US dollars. So I'm not, I'm not talking to you as just Paul Smith. I'm talking to you as the guy that lives in Monaco that is plugged into the highest net worth individuals in the world and I'm closely studying, shadowing and evaluating what they're talking about. But let me just prove to you before we sign off this video in terms of what you should do next. What I want to do is I want to look at, you can see there on the chart, that Turkish inflation is currently 86%. So let's go and have a look at what's happening to property prices in Turkey. Because if you're right, Paul, 
if high inflation means that everything goes up, then the value of property in Turkey should be rocketing at the moment. Well, let's have a look. So, interesting, 72% more foreigners were buying residential property in Turkey than they were one year ago. Oh, well, why is that? Well, the value of the Turkish lira has plummeted. So, Turkish property, when measured in pounds, euros, dollars, has just gone dirt cheap. So that's why everyone's buying it. But if you then look at <clears throat> uh, the, the increases in property values in Turkey, let's have a look at this. Turkey ranks first in the Eurostat house price index with a 110% increase in the cost of residential properties. 110% in three months. Three months. The property value in Turkey has doubled in three months. And in Istanbul, for instance, you know, 164%. Ankara, 147%. So the price of property in a company, in a company, a country that's got hyperinflation, Turkey, the price of the property is going up even quicker than the devaluation of the Turkish currency. Why? Well, if you're going to build a property in Turkey, you still need bricks, you still need wood, you still need people to actually put it all together. So if you're a local, you've got to pay all those prices. But the fact that the prices are going down because your currency is getting devalued is sucking in a load of foreign money. So you've got two things you need to contend with. You've got local inflation and you've got the comparative cheapness of money. So what does all this mean for you? And by the way, I'm not suggesting that you go and live in Turkey. Well, I don't know, there's worse places to live. But what I'm saying is that because, let's go back to this, because Elliot, this massive, massive hedge fund, <coughs> in their secret note to their investors said, hyperinflation. When I did my predictions for 2022, a year ago, I do them at the end of every year, I said the number one issue in the UK and in the Western world was inflation. Look what happened. What these guys are saying is never mind inflation, what about hyperinflation? So more than 50% a year. So what are you going to do with your hard-earned cash? What are you going to do with your savings? You now, if you've got 100 grand in the bank, that's going to be worth literally £2.50 if inflation in the UK hits 50% a month. But let's say it's not that bad. Let's say it's only 22%. You've got a million quid in the bank. 22% inflation is going to mean your money is worth about £750,000 one year from now. How are you going to feel about that? So my solution the solution of the investors that want to build wealth through property is very simple. Learn how to invest that money wisely. And I've given you a few tips. You know, and if you're on the aggressive end of the risk spectrum, like I am, maybe you want to hold some dollars. Maybe you want to hold some gold. But in the English language, what do we say? We say, as safe as houses. Why do we say that? Well, if you go back, over the last, oh, go back over the last, whatever you want. In, in, let's have a look here at this chart since 1952. So that's 70 years. The average house price in 1952 was £1,891. Now, this chart only goes up to 2020. Now, today, it's just a few quid of £300,000. All right, so what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do? to make sure that you, your family, your loved ones are actually the ones that come out of this next crazy recession as millionaires or even billionaires. You could easily be a billionaire, 50% inflation a month. You could be a billionaire in no time. But I want you to one of the people saying, phew, thank goodness I took action. Thank goodness I listened to that crazy guy off the internet ranting about inflation and hype. I didn't understand most of what he was talking about, but I did what he told me to do. So what do you need to do to be safe? You need to click on the link below. You need to come along to Wealth Through Property. Two days to show you exactly how to protect your money, to grow your wealth, to borrow bank's money and get that burnt and torched instead of torching your money. You want the asset prices going up, tick. Mortgage value going down, tick. Rent going up, tick. See, inflation is the property investor's best friend. Now, for the first 100 people that have got the capability to get this digit and hit that link, I'm going to get normal price, £99 for two days, packed with education. 
but I'm going to give you a 50% discount because I want to imagine that inflation is 50%. So let's knock off 50% for the first 100 people. You're one of the first 100 people. Smash that link. Get yourself a ticket. Come along and spend two days with us at Well Through Property. We do it twice a month. So just you've got no excuse. You've got no excuse. You're sitting there next Christmas, Christmas 2023, thinking, Jesus, I wish I'd listened to that guy. That's on you. That is 100% on you. Dead simple. Hit the link and I'll see you online. My name is Paul Smith, Touch Education. You've been wonderful. I've been Paul. Let's get wealthy together.